Hey there, my name is Megan and welcome back to my channel. Today I am coming to you from my stairwell. I'm going to talk about how I ripped up the carpet that looked like Muppet skin. <laughs> Someone said in a blog that the beige carpet, like the builder's grade carpet that you'll find in most houses, reminded them of Muppet skin and I haven't been able to get it out of my head because I think it's hilarious and very true. Anyway, I ripped it up and I painted my stairs. So I just want to talk to you guys about the process of that, how long it took, what I used, whether or not I recommend it, and how they've held up over the last year. Welcome to my home. These are my stairs currently. They've been painted and they have been walked on for the last year and this is the current state that they are in. I don't have great footage of the before, but this is what I do have. And a lot of people have this kind of carpet in their house. It's just builder's grade, plain beige carpet. This project took a lot of time. It took a lot of time. It was rough. We have three stories in our house. So we had two sets of stairs and I had to split it up. I did the first, from, from the first floor to the second floor, I did in a matter of probably like two weeks. Um, in between like work and on the weekends and when that was finished I was dreading doing the other set because I had already built one landing with my husband we had to rebuild the landing over the subflooring downstairs and then this one is larger than that and I almost wish I would have started from top to bottom but I was so excited to have it done and have people over to see it so I started from the bottom and it just it was it was a long tedious project for sure if you're thinking of doing this, the first thing I would do would be to peel back a little piece of carpet. Don't be scared to do that. Their tack strips are there. You can always push it right back in. Peel that back and see what's under your stairs. If you don't have treads on your stairs and it's just subflooring, you're going to have to put treads on. You're going to have to rebuild something. And in that case, I would either replace it just with carpet again, or I would look into how much it's going to cost to do that and I would possibly maybe even hire somebody to do it because it's a lot of work and I don't know where I would begin with replacing the treads myself. So when I first started thinking about doing this project, all I knew was that I couldn't stand the carpet on these stairs anymore because we didn't take our shoes off always when we came in the house. The carpet near the front door looked dirtier than the carpet did you know, at the top of the stairs on the third floor, it like slowly progressively got a little bit more beige and less brown. And I just knew that I was more attracted to a cleaner look. Um, I wasn't really loving carpet in houses in general. I'm more attracted to the hardwood look with lots of area rugs. The trouble with replacing the stairs was that we have a larger house and I don't love the flooring in the house to begin with. So I didn't want to take on such a big project that we'd be replacing all of the flooring throughout our entire house. I just needed a quick fix for the stairs, basically. So I was curious as to what was underneath them. My brother is, has been working in the construction field for years. I talked to my brother and I asked him what, I, what he thought would be underneath the carpet if I ripped them up. And he strongly advised me not to even bother looking because it was probably all subflooring. That it was probably plywood and subflooring and that if we wanted to have a cleaner look on these stairs and rip the carpet up, that we would have to actually replace the treads or add on treads. So I believed him for about two minutes and then I went home and I peeled back some of the carpet and I saw that underneath that it wasn't just plywood and subflooring, that it was actually something that I could do something with. So the treads were like pine treads and the risers were plywood. So I did a little bit of research and I decided that I wanted to use porch paint for these. I wanted to be a really durable finish. I didn't want anything to scratch off. I had thought about using chalk paint. I love chalk paint. I've used chalk paint for lots of projects, but I wanted something that would be really, really sturdy for these, something that would not scratch off. And so I decided that paint that was meant for concrete 
would be perfect. And I was right. It was a great choice for these. And um, I just used like the ultra widest white that they had in concrete and porch paint. Actually, I think it was porch and patio paint. Um, but the first thing I did was I ripped all the carpet off. So I ripped everything off and I took out all the tack strips, all of the nails, all of the staples. That took a long time. That was probably the hardest and worst part about this project. Um, when they build these houses, they are just building them as fast as they can. This house is only 10 years old, they're just throwing them up. So they just stapled, 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 nailed, nailed, nailed. I mean, it was just kind of a quick job and you could tell. And I even found like plastic underneath the carpet and like old chewing gum and it's just, it was a mess. So I ripped the carpet off, I ripped all the tack strips off, all of the staples, all of the nails, all of that. And then I could really see what I was dealing with. And what they do when they paint these places is they spray them. So I had a lot of paint on all of the plywood and all of the treads already. And I needed to get that off. I wanted to start with a really clean, smooth finish. So I used a gel paint stripper and I just laid it out on all of the treads and I went back after it sat for a little while and I scraped everything off and cleaned all of that off. Then I had to go through and I had to sand and then I could really see what I was dealing with. Then I could finally really see what I was dealing with and it was a hot mess. There were gouges, there were places where, you know, tons of nail holes and staple holes and the pine is so soft that every time I even just set my hammer down, just set it down, it would leave a, uh, like a, a little soft spot in the wood. It would leave like a little dent. It was crazy. So I went through and I used wood putty and filled all of the nail holes, any gouge, went back through and sanded. Sometimes I was impatient, didn't let it dry long enough. I highly recommend doing that. Um, let it dry, let all of the wood putty and all of the wood filler dry for at least like a couple hours because especially for those big, big holes because that's what I was dealing with was like huge holes. Um, I was just impatient, but if I could change anything, I would go back and I would let it dry. Um, and then I had to go through and sand that and then finally I was able to go through and paint. I painted everything. I painted the treads, the risers, the baseboards, everything. We did have to go through and we had to replace the landings because the landings were subflooring. So on this top step, this is actually a tread I bought. Um, we just cut it to fit and then we went through behind it and filled it with two by fours. We used quarter round to frame it here and then I painted it with the same thing. I will say that after a year of having these, I couldn't be happier. They haven't changed. I go through and I sweep them and I use a Mr. Clean Magic Eraser to clean it up and they're great. A lot of people think I'm crazy for having white stairs because you can literally see every speck of dust, every dog hair, every little thing that gets tracked into the house, you can see it on my stairs. Personally, I love that. I want to see the dirt in my house so that I can clean it and I know how dirty it is. It doesn't make sense to me why you would have something in your house that hides dirt. That's really gross and really odd to me. So um, I like that they're white. I can see everything, I can clean them. I sweep them once a week and then probably once every couple weeks I go in and either me or the girl that cleans my house, the lovely girl that cleans my house, um, she will also clean them and they're they're super easy to clean it's not a lot of maintenance um, it's certainly easier than vacuuming carpet on stairs the one thing i would change is <laughs> i have slipped on them and i had a friend slip on them recently at a gathering and i felt really awful um so if i could change anything i would maybe I love the way they look. I don't want to change anything, but I ha it has been suggested to me to add a little bit of sand to the paint so that it gives it a grit. Um, they're fine in shoes and bare feet, but they're not extremely safe in socks. They're a little slippery. They're not done. I still want to go back and I have a couple places where they need to be finished. Like here, we just kind of filled, you can see this is like, 
it's a hole there that my husband like cut a little piece of wood to fit in here. I need to paint it and then fill around it with caulk. Um, and then we came back from a trip and our house had settled. And so there's a, a lot of places where there's just like little cracks where I need to go back and recall. I would like to also go back and paint my railings black, I think. I'm thinking about that. I have the wood here, I wanna keep this shelf here, but my railings are like a, a warm reddish brown and I don't think it really goes with anything I have inside of me. Warm reddish brown does not really sit well with me. <laughs> I don't love that. So if I can eliminate that out of my house, unfortunately, all of my floors are that color. And I'm thinking about painting those too. I don't know. Anyway, that's today's video. I thank you for stopping in and checking it out. I hope that you learned something from this uh, as to whether or not you want to take a project like this on. If you guys have any questions or comments, or if you have actually done this before, I want to hear about it. Please leave a comment below. Make sure you subscribe to my channel so that you can see my future projects, and I'll see you guys next time.